Well, it is indeed an um, incredible privilege to share from this context um, to crystallize how this all came about. I was praying in my kitchen and I said, for our 12 year anniversary, what do we want to do? And I said, well, I don't want to do your traditional invite guest speakers in and do all that. I said, Lord, I want to do a prayer conference. And I said, I, I need to figure out who to bring in because I just don't invite people based on relationships. I base it on the timing of God. And all of a sudden my phone, my WhatsApp rang and it was Pastor Sam who said, I want to do a prayer conference. And you know, I, I can go to Pastor William's church, um, but I felt the Lord telling me to come to you. And I said, well, the reason why that is, is because I was just here praying about having a prayer conference and you text me right at the same time. So I said in my head, I said, I need it to be in January because it's the time of our anniversary. I said, well, when is it? He says, I'm thinking of January. <laughs> One thing, um, most people believe millennials in context don't pray. My mom and my dad, my mom led me at the age of 12, up to 12 years old, every Saturday from nine to noon for prayer for four hours. Now as a youth, that is not the ideal thing you wanna do every Saturday morning. My mom and dad are here. And my father has, My father has a prayer regimen of praying every morning at 3.45 in the morning for an hour. And I grew up watching my parents pray, watching my mom till this day leads prayer every Saturday, 9 a.m. to noon. Now I know you're in the Western world, we're used to prayer with music and praise team singers. And when I went, there was none of that. They just read the Psalms and prayed. So my life, um, some say, you know, he knows real estate or marketing or whatever the case is, but my life has been shaped by prayer. I know one thing for sure. I know how to call on God. Uh, you can pass down to your children riches and things, but the name of the Lord is a strong gift to give. I want to talk for a few moments of time from this um, thought when God starts the prayer. First Samuel 3 reads in this manner. It says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night Eli who was almost blind by now had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly the Lord called out to him and said Samuel. Yes Samuel replied what is it he got up and ran to Eli here I am did you call me he said I didn't call you Eli replied go back to bed so he did then the Lord God called out again Samuel again Samuel got up went to Eli here I am did you call me I didn't call you my son Eli said go back to bed Samuel did not yet know the Lord Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord God called a third time and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and the Lord came and called before him again, just as he did Moses, Moses. He said, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Last verse, then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. 
And I, I don't want to utilize, I want to use a, utilize Israel from this particular text in a sense of a replacement theology of sorts in regards to Israel being the local church. I want to say that there is an interesting thing happening in this text that Samuel is working in the tabernacle but doesn't have a revelation of God yet. And there are so many of us that are working within the context of the local church that have yet to get a revelation of who God really is. Because it is possible to master the art of serving and not know the Lord of the serving. So here's what happens. Samuel has been shadowing what he has been observing. And he's learned how to do without understanding the spirit behind what he does. Which is why a lot of our churches in our world today have done a masterful job at being able to do church without the Holy Spirit. Because you can learn it so well for so long that you can perform it without the spirit behind it. But there was an interesting thing, I think it's good to note that the Hebrew culture had this idea of when you pray called Kavanah. Kavanah was their ability to focus when they pray. It's called focus prayer. It's called devoted prayer. It is your ability to, and you will oftentimes see rabbis, they would rock when they pray. And the reason why they were rocking was so that they can get their focus because they didn't want anything to distract or break their focus. And I know today's world, we don't have that type of discipline, that kavanah, that focus. It is said that without kavanah, it is like praying. It is like a body without a soul because when you go into to the prayer realm and you do not have a devotion or a focus you will be distracted from the presence of God and it is so powerful what he said don't bring your cell phones in the presence don't bring anything in the presence that will distract your kavanah your focus your intent direction towards God and when you and I pray we must have a focus we must have a bullseye we must know what we're praying to we must know what we're praying for we must know what we're praying about and a a lot of times our minds will drift when we pray and we won't even recognize that we've been in the presence of God for 10 minutes and seven of it has been wasted because we did not have kavanah, we did not have focus, we did not have intent, we did not have a direct decision on where we are praying and Samuel is praying before the Lord and kavanah is a Hebrew word for direction, intention or purpose. In its simple meaning, it means concentrating the mind on the devout act that you're about to perform. In this text, for centuries, God didn't say a word. And the land didn't need more resources. It needed a word from God. They thought it was in this, they thought it was in that, they thought it was in this, they thought it was in that, and God was starting to speak again. Can you imagine living a day without God? These people had lived years without hearing anything the Lord was saying, and all of a sudden, a man who's in the temple who has observed how to worship, who's observed how to do it. He hasn't learned it so well that he's become religious, but he's learned it so well to become curious. And his curiosity is what God is about to kindle. His curiosity, sometimes God protects us from the influences of others because their influence will contaminate our curiosity. And so God, even though Eli was the lead, Eli was the father figure, Eli was the priest, his eyes were growing dim. In the temple, it says the lamp was burning bright, but his eyes were growing dim. It speaks of people who used to have the anointing and the anointing left them and they don't even know that it left their soul. It speaks of a man that used to be able to prophesy 
and everybody would fill up arenas to hear him and the spirit of God has left him and he doesn't even recognize it his eyes are dim he can't see and God bypasses the protocol God bypasses the system and he raises up a guy out of nowhere named Samuel because Samuel's name means the Lord hears it is interesting that you know in the Hebrew culture they would name their children 30 days after birth because they wanted to know the destiny of the child and even when Samuel was in the altar and it seemed like he was playing around it seemed like he was mimicking what he saw God was hearing him God was hearing him all along God was hearing him all along and then God says I'm going to bypass the religious system I'm going to do something so unique in Israel that has never been seen before I'm going to use a man that is supposed to be the understudy and he's going to be the role model I'm going to reverse the roles and I'm going to call a man named Samuel that's sleeping and all of a sudden he goes to Eli and says did you call me because oftentimes the voice of God sounds like your leader and Eli doesn't have enough discernment to know that it's not God calling he says, go back to bed, I didn't call you. He goes back to Eli a second time and says, did you call me? He says, no, go back to bed. He goes back to Eli a third time and Eli says, wait a minute, I remember. That's how God used to call me. And there's some people that are using an expired anointing to pass down to you what God is saying. And it's interesting that God could use you in a season, but not be using you for a lifetime. God used Eli for the moment, but already had removed his spirit from him. And God says to him, no, you tell him that, and you got to be careful on discounting vessels that God could use for a moment. Just because God used you for a moment doesn't mean God is using you for a season. And Eli was used for a moment because he was already discredited for a season. And he says, well, if the Lord calls you again, Again, tell him here am I and Samuel goes before the Lord and he says Lord here am I I don't have the education I don't have the degree I don't have the Rolodex I don't have the friends I don't have the Instagram followers I don't have the Facebook followers but I do have one thing it is a word called here am I I don't have everything that everybody else has I don't have the style that everybody else has I don't have the garment that everybody else has but one thing that I do have I I have a here am I and if you're in this room and you got a here am I you're a candidate that God will use to break the system to rearrange the system I know they're looking for another person in Israel but God is raising up a Samuel who is the here am I and all of a sudden this this man he has an interesting thing because Samuel has a unique way and he's obediently identified himself as the Lord's servant. And he urges God to speak. He identifies himself as just a servant. No, you didn't hear what I said. He says, Lord, if I'm going to receive what I identify myself as also speaks to my posture. And so some of us have taken the posture of a teacher when God speaks. And you're missing God because you haven't taken the posture of a student. And Samuel says, no, Lord, if you're going to speak, I'm a servant. I don't care how many times I've been in a tabernacle. I don't care how many times I've been around your presence. I'm a servant when you speak. I don't care how well known I am when I'm in your presence I'm a servant I don't care how authoritative I am when I'm in your presence I'm a servant and this is part of the problem in the church we raised up many people who are stars but not servants they are bigger than God himself and God is saying I'm looking for people who are servants 
when you find me I'm a servant when you see me I'm a servant when you're seeking after me I'm a servant no matter how many doors you open up I'm still a servant and the Lord says Samuel I'm about to do a new thing in Israel and it starts with just this here am I and God I want something new to happen in my life God is saying say here am I I'm waiting for something explosive to happen in my life and God is saying say here am I and the lamp of God was still burning in the midst of Shiloh's darkness because here is the thing that even in darkness the lamp of God still burns even if you don't see them in your community, the lamp of God still burns. Even if you don't hear him, the lamp of God still burns. It's burning right now. It's looking for people that want the fire of God. And some seasons we get like Eli where we're dry and it doesn't seem like there are rivers flowing and it seems like we're in a prayer desert. It seems like we're in a spiritual drought. One thing that that Eli got right he didn't get a lot of things right but one thing he got right he laid in the presence of the ark of God because when you can't hear God don't move from his presence because sometimes God is silent to see how long you'll stay sometimes God won't say a word to see how long you'll rest and Eli even though I can't hear you even though I messed up even though my season is over even though I made some bad choices with my children even though my children have dishonored you and I feel like I'm bearing the reproach of their decisions I'm going to lay in your presence because God will redeem anything that's in his presence and there may be some of you that feel condemned because your children aren't following God they're not serving God and you feel like Eli it's my fault you feel like Eli it is my responsibility as long as you remain in the presence of God God will speak to you again God will rekindle what he once said before here it is he was in the presence of God and when you have seasons when you're dry and you don't know what to say and you can't articulate what to say because you're just in a dry season because if you live long enough if you pour out to everybody else, you'll eventually be dry yourself. And when you're in a dry season, it just seems like every prayer don't even work. It seems like every hallelujah doesn't even work. It seems like you lift your hands and you don't feel nothing. It seems like you read the psalm and nothing moved. You can go to church and hear the word and see everybody shouting around you and inside you're saying I want that but I just feel so dry. You could be seeing everybody running around the sanctuary and you're saying that was a good word but it didn't touch my soul like it used to. It didn't move my soul because you're in a dry season but there is something in Revelation chapter number 5 verse number 8 it's called harp and bowl prayer it is what I love to utilize to pray because it is an imperative type of prayer it is where you have music playing and the incense being offered up because sometimes when you're praying without music it's very difficult to enter in the presence of God there is something spiritual about praying with music in revelations when they pray they pray with music and the incense going up at the same time they pray with the music and the incense going up at the same time why because that's very important because when you get into dry seasons sometimes you need to use another weapon and sometimes you're using an old weapon when you could switch it up and use a new weapon and there are times where you need to get that worship song on that will start to speak to your atmosphere and start to speak to your spirit and everybody has that song it is that one song no matter how dry you are it brings you out it's not just a song it's a prayer baby and that's why they do in revelation they read the scriptures as songs they read the songs as songs because there is an authority in the words that we sing there is an authority in the words that we pray and whenever you're in a dry season there will be times where you need to just put 
pull out that old song and begin to declare it unto God until you start feeling your help come, until you start feeling your spirit man leap, until you start feeling the next level of unction coming. Because God is moving. He moves. He moves. God is like water. He moves. And there are some seasons when you're at the shore, you don't feel him moving. But you can get enough atmosphere pressure going to where you release something in the atmosphere. To where it causes the rivers to start flowing. And when the waters start to begin to flow, that's when you see the current is moving. And when the current is moving, you learn how to ride the current. You learn how to ride the current. It's not just channels. There are currents in God. And you learn how to ride the rivers. You learn how to ride the rivers and there are moments where you don't feel God moving but then you just feel like there's a moment where the presence of God is there and you ride the river you don't get off the river you ride the river you break your program you break your routine and you say this is where God has moved this is where God has breathed it's the same way in the church it may not come on the first song it may not come on the second song it may not come on the song we rehearse but God will flow like a river and when he flows you ride the current you ride the current and you ride the current until you learn how to float on your own I needed the current to help me float on my own I need the current to help me float on my own and that's what prayer does and when you pray in the unknown and you pray in the understanding and there are times where your understanding doesn't match what is in the spirit and you switch the realms you switch the realms, and you ride the current in the spirit until your natural catches up with your spirit so when you lift your hands and you begin to pray in the spirit, Raman Soriana Rabasa, he canadian boshi, matanidiana basa, and then your natural language starts kicking in. Father, I thank you for authority. I thank you for power. I thank you for dominion. I thank you for the grace of God. I thank you for the ability to fight spirits. I thank you for the ability to war in the spirit. You've commanded my hands. You've taught them how to war. And you do that by flowing in courage. Come on, open up your mouth and say something. That's the current of God right there. Come on, open up your mouth and say something. That's how flowing in the current. That's how you flow in the current. He's here right now. He's here right now. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. You ride the current. You ride the current. The door is open. You ride. You ride. You ride the current. You ride the current. You ride the current. You ride the current. Father God, we love you. Father God, we honor you. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, God. Here am I, Lord. Change the season. Skip the season. Use me beyond what I would ever imagine, ask or think. Break the system. Break the system. I am your Samuel that you can use to break the system. To break the system. Because sound, sound says something. Sound is powerful. And when they're in the presence of God, they make a sound. And there are a lot of us in the West, we pray in our head, we pray in our mind, but there's a sound. That's why Satan works overtime on keeping your mouth closed. That's why Eli told Samuel, don't think in your head, here I am. Don't think in your heart, here I am. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, here I am. There is authority when you open your mouth. There is power when you open your mouth. That's why he He's been fighting your voice because there is authority. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. So here it is.
Can you just worship him for 10 seconds? I'm going to give you these points and we'll go home. Can you just say glory to God? Just say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is. So Samuel, Samuel had this. I want to give you this. Samuel had this. He had a routine with no relationship. And if you're not careful, you will master church attendance, have routine with no relationship. Number two, God calls him while serving. Even if you don't hear him, keep serving. Because eventually, your ears will open. Here's the one. Here's the one that hurts you. God calls him while resting. Because resting says, I'm taking it out of my hands and I'm trusting it in your hands. Sleep is a sign of faith. Because if you can go to bed and stop letting it keep you up at night, it's a sign that you're saying to God, it's in your hands, it's not in my hands. I'm going to rest because I can't control it in my own strength. Number four, Samuel was not looking for God. But God was looking for him. It is a provocative thing to know a holy God is looking for a deficient person like us. And there was no revelation in the community, but he was looking for one who was hungry enough was looking for one who was desperate enough. He was looking for one that wanted to get low so that God could be. Samuel wasn't looking for what Eli had. Samuel was just serving because he loved the Lord. Samuel was just serving because it was just his heart's desire. It was good when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know what's going to be there, but I just want to be in God's house. And God is looking for that one. Here it is. Howard Thurman says, it is in quietness one discovers God. It is in solitude when you can escape the noise, escape the world, and sit alone in silence. I know it's hard to sit in silence, but you can't hear God if you're not in silence. You can't hear God unless you're still and prayer after you said all you said, after you've labored in the spirit, after you cried out to God, then you need to sit in silence and say, Lord, your servant is listening. Here am I. I want to hear from you. And a lot of us pray and we keep talking and we keep talking and we keep talking, but we never stop stop in solitude and say Lord speak to me it's in silence separate yourself Jehovah Mechanist the Lord that sanctifies separate yourself so you can hear what the Lord is saying but Samuel also realized we're done Hearing God is oftentimes far more important than seeing God. Hearing God is oftentimes far more important than seeing God. So many people are, I want to see God. And God's like, I want you to hear me. 
because if you don't hear me you have no balance your ears give you balance if we remove your ears you have no stability and the reason why you have no stability in the spirit is because you can't hear Not just the diet, but go on a hidden place. Escape the noise. Separate from the crowd. Go off in solitude. Turn off the Instagram. Turn off the social media strategies. And sit before him until he gives you a plan that looks much bigger than your present. Because whatever you hear should scare you into the presence of God. Whatever you hear should be so big. It should be so magnanimous. It should be so large that you sit there and you wrestle with it. And you say, Lord, how is this going to be? How is this going to come to pass? How is this going to happen? If your dream is able to be accomplished in the span of your own ability, it's not a dream from God. Because God's dreams are so big that you got to sit down and think about, Lord, how is in the world am I going to make this happen how in the world are you gonna bring it to pass and God leaves it so big so that he can consistently have your attention here's what it says God comes in a whisper if you can't hear him Maybe your ear is too far from his whisper. It's not, is he speaking? It's about the position of your ear. And when I can't hear him, I gotta get closer. saying I don't know what to do in this next season Samuel I'm calling you they've been saying I don't know where to go Samuel I'm calling you and if you'll incline your ear to me I will do something supernatural in your life I will raise you up as a prophet and you will be an introduction to the Davids in the world David will not be known by himself but he will be known by the introduction of Samuel and the introduction of Samuel only came because he was willing to say Lord speak to me and I will listen to you And maybe David can't come because Samuel can't hear. So in dry seasons, keep serving. Keep resting in him. You don't need to be worried about seeing him. You gotta be worried about hearing him. Because God has a prophetic word, but he needs the Samuels to hear it, to decree it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let 
us hear you. Father, let us come to this conference and let us have so much words that we've written on paper because you've been speaking to us. Let it overflow from page to page. Let it overflow from note to note. What we're hearing the Spirit of God say to us, how to lead our families, how to invest our time, how to invest our resources, the opportunities that you're sending. Father, let us have pages filled of insight on where to go next. Father, some of us need revelation for the next 10. Some of us need restoration from the last 10. Help us to hear. 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 Help our ears to be fine-tuned. Help our ears to be fine-tuned that we will not double second guess and double understand what you're saying, but we will have an ear to hear. Help us to hear. In a world that's shouting for Samuel, help us to hear in a world that's dark. Help us to hear in a world that's filled with darkness. But the lamp of God is still burning for those that will pursue the lamp, for those that will pursue the brightness of your spirit. Father, help us to hear you. Said your sheep know your voice, and the strangest voice they will not follow. So let us hear you. We want to hear you. We want to hear you. We want to hear you. More than food, we want to hear you. We want to hear, we want to hear, we want to hear, we want to hear, I need to hear, I need to hear your voice, I need to hear, I need to hear your voice, it's been a while, I need to hear, 